Hey, what's up, unreal people out there? <laughs> no pun intended. Um, yeah, today we're going to be talking about procedural foliage volumes and what they are and how they can speed up and automate our workflow. A lot of people don't know about the procedural foliage volumes. They are in testing, still beta, but I really wanted to go through because some people have asked me, um, you know, how do you create certain volumes or how do you create certain foliage easily, you know, because the foliage tool is really annoying. So we're going to go through that actually right now just to kind of show, not annoying, but maybe tedious. Uh, that would that'd be the better word for this is it's very tedious. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, let me grab some grass. I have the Divis grass pack here. Um, let me save some of this here. I think I saved it to the wrong deck. That's fine. Um, we're going to go ahead, grab this and just start painting. So yeah, so here is kind of the manual kind of way of painting foliage. And this can become a very tedious task, right? Because you've got to go in, you've got to paint things. Now, this tool, I would say, is really good if you want to fine tune things, right? So if you want to go in and fine tune some certain stuff, I think that is great. Um, you know, as well as, hey, we can go ahead, let's add a tree in there. Uh, let's say that's a foliage right there. Perfect. Um, I'm going to turn these off, turn this on. And then, oh, wow, look at that. <laughs> That's a little crazy. Uh, our density is way too high. Let's do 10. Maybe give it a radius of, uh, you know, 100 maybe. There we go. And then now we're getting a little more, you know, variation there, which is pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, this can become very tedious because you're going. Now, this is good. Once again, I said if you're fine tuning stuff, but I think you know, doing a procedural foliage volume is going to be a lot simpler. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead. I'm going to delete these. And when you do that from here, it wants to remove it um, from the project. Uh, so there you go. It just deletes everything, kind of starts it from scratch, which is good. I'm going to go ahead and switch back to select. And now we have to do one thing before we can start. And what we have to do there is we have to actually enable procedural volume. So we go here under edit edit preferences and then we're going to go ahead and type in procedural volumes and you can see procedure foliage right here and we're going to go ahead and turn that on what does that do well it enables a whole bunch of things for us so i'm just going to click on the details there but i'm going to go to my content drawer let's go under content and we are going to go ahead and create a new folder i'm going to go ahead and call it a new folder and we're going to call this procedural uh, procedure underscore volumes. There we go. And then I'm going to go ahead in there and we're going to start by creating first, uh, our static objects and then as well, then go ahead and create. So I'm going to right click in here and I'm going to go under foliage and I'm going to go static mesh foliage. I'm going to go ahead and click that. And we're going to call this uh, grass, uh, one, we'll call it grass one. It's not the best, but, um, technically actually the best way to call it is we're going to call this procedural volume underscore, and then the name. So I'm going to have grass, uh, one, and it's kind of like a grass variation. And if you open it, you're going to get all of these different, uh, stuff and then we're going to go through this in a second but first i'm going to go ahead and add my actual grass so i am using the dviz grass pack i'm going to go ahead and add uh, my first grass instance into there and that's it that's all you have to do for that which is pretty cool and then i'm going to go ahead and close that well, i probably should have saved it first but uh, so now under my procedural volumes you can see i have my grass pack i'm just going to go ahead and save it make sure it's saved there we go. And then the next thing you need to do is you need to actually create the volume. So I'm going to go under foliage and then procedure foliage spawner. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And then I'm going to call this my uh, procedure foliage spawner. Okay. And you can have multiples of these. You don't need to have just one. You can actually have multiples, which is pretty cool. Um, but you can set it up. So now I'm going to do is double click on there. And all you have to do on here is add the foliage type. So the foliage that we just created 
is the grass type. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the grass from my procedural foliage directory. And I'm going to go ahead and drag that in here. And that's it. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And then I'm going to drop that down. So now what we're going to do is, is we're going to go to our content drawer, my procedure uh, foliage volume here. And I'm going to bring that in. And then I'm going to scale this. So let's go ahead and scale this right now. It's there. So let's just do like a 10 by 10 by 10 grid. Um, so here's my 10 by 10. It is a box. Um, you can change this, I believe, in the settings somewhere, but we're not going to worry about that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down uh, till I see resimulate. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to hit resimulate. And what do you know? There you know, you have now grass inside this volume, which is pretty cool. Um, but obviously, it doesn't have that much grass. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the actual grass instance that we have here. And we're going to go to um, da, 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 procedural. We're going to go under collision and take a look at the collision radius. And for grass, we're not going to want it to be saying is is that hey we don't want these to be very close to each other um, so let's turn you know the collision radius down to zero and then turn the shade radius uh, down to one so shade radius or shade radius essentially means that it, hey if you're in the shade you're not gonna grow in that area so that's pretty cool I'm gonna hit save and what I'm going to do now is just minimize that and then go back to my procedural foliage and I'm going to hit re-simulate. So now you're seeing we're getting a little more clustering going on, which is pretty cool. There we go. There we go. Now, I want obviously to be more grass. All right. I want there to definitely be more grass than this. So I'm going to go back to my grass instance. There we go. And we're going to go down to clustering. Here we go. We have clustering. So we have the initial seed density is at one. Um, you know, you can raise this higher. And what that's going to do is, is that it's going to essentially, so let me put it at three. Let's hit save. And we're going to go ahead and hit re-simulate. Obviously, it takes a bit longer. Oops, I clicked on that by accident. And obviously, you can see, there we go. We just got some more grass. So we're probably going to have to go higher than that. Um, let's go, let's double that. Let's go to six, hit save. And then we're going to go ahead and on the procedural world volume, we're going to scroll down and we're going to hit re-simulate. And it's going to take a little longer because obviously now we're getting more grass. Cool. Check that out. That is awesome. Okay. So this is really good because now you can like take this object right and we're gonna go ahead and just scale it like this and scale a little more on this way obviously it's bigger now and now then we're gonna go ahead and hit re-simulate and it's going to re-simulate there we go that is pretty pretty cool i'm gonna scale it up in the height axis and as well i'm gonna actually go a little bigger i already i already went up there here uh scale so let's do uh x and y we'll do 20 by 20 and just get that a little bit. Actually, you know what? Let's just go to 50 by 50. Just make it really, really big. Now, this may take a bit longer to do, but we're going to go ahead and simulate and then re-simulate. Take a little while. Boom, there we go. Very, very cool. And then now we've got grass. Now, of course, this is unoptimized. Um, you're not going to want, obviously, this much grass that much far you're going to want to blend it with the environment and blend it with things but i'm not going to get into that because um, you can in uh that grass type is you can do culling distance so right now you have a cull distance essentially it's kind of like how far do you want to draw the grass and right now it's just drawing at an infinite plane um, but you can change that so like for example let's say you want it to start at 100 and end at 1500 um, and it actually updates automatically if you see that so there you go so there is kind of the call distance uh, which is really really nice so if you want that to go further you can you can go like 2500 and then save that and you can see the call distance updates in real time which is pretty cool there we go and you know you can do things like fading or whatever you want to do there but i'm going to set that back right now to zero uh, just so that you guys can see all of that perfect perfect okay good so that is part one now let's go ahead and start doing some more neat things with this and what we're going to do is we're going to actually add 
another object. So we're going to go in and add another object. So I'm going to go here to foliage and we're going to go to static mesh foliage again. And we're going to call this procedure volume underscore and we'll call it tree. And you know, you can do tree one, tree two, or you can name it the actual species of the tree. I'm going to go under my content drawer, go to my D divis pack, and we're going to add a tree. So let me go down. Uh, sure, let's add this tree right here. It's already been processed, so that's good. And we're just going to go ahead and save that. Um, and collision radius, we're going to leave everything like kind of static, right? Or like default values. And then we're going to go in and play with that um, right after. So now after that's been saved, obviously, what do we have to do to add it? Well, we have to add it to the procedural volume. So I'm going to go under procedural volumes. I'm going to go under the procedural volume. I think I named that wrong, but that doesn't matter. I'm going to add another array element. So I'm going to go ahead and add another array. I'm going to go ahead and add the tree now. Pretty simple. Hit save. Here we go. I'm going to go down here and hit re-simulate. And let's see what happens. There we go. So now it just added a whole bunch of trees. Um, and the neat thing, if you look at it, it's actually adding like a little space underneath the tree where the grass is. So that is really, really cool. That is very, very cool. I'm really liking that. I'm really digging that. That's really, really cool. It's getting right up to the edge of that volume, which is really, really nice. Okay, cool. So now we kind of got like a little procedure error. So this really is neat for, you know, wanting to do a quick way of adding foliage to your environments. And this also works on static meshes, guys, not just on landscapes, which is pretty cool. So now this is where we get into the kind of cool stuff. Now, this is remember I said stay till then. And so now we're actually going to go through some very, very cool stuff. Um, and we're going to do some neat things. So then what we're going to do now is we're going to add something to the scene. Before we go into even more, we're going to add something. What do we do? We're going to go here and we're going to click on add. And I'm going to talk about, okay, it's a block. I'm going to type in block. And you're going to see where it says procedural foliage blocking volume. And I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And now I've got this box, which is right here. So let's say, for example, you want to make a path. All right. So let's go ahead and let's make a path. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first scale this up very, very high. Um, you know what? Let's just make this maybe like, let's do 15 by 15 by 15. There we go. Did I make that too big? I may have made that too big. I may have made that. Too, oh, I made it 150. My bad. Let's do 15. <laughs> There we go. And then the height doesn't need to be that big. The height can be like 50. Um, really doesn't matter. But what's the most important thing is you want it overlapping. Okay. So now what we can do is, is I'm just going to move this inside my volume. Make sure it's overlapping, which it is. You can move it up or down. Perfect. And watch what happens now. I'm going to click on the original procedural foliage volume. And I'm going to go ahead and hit re-simulate and watch what happens. Look at that. It actually cuts out everything that's inside there. Okay, so look at that. You have a nice cut line of grass. Oh my God, that looks so good right there. That's perfect. Oh my goodness. So why is this cool? Well, now this is where I'm going to get into really cool parts. Okay. What I'm actually going to do is, is I'm going to make this smaller. All right, I'm going to make this smaller. Oh, I actually did the wrong one. I'm going to go ahead and grab my blocking volume. I'm going to make this smaller in a couple different areas. And watch what I'm going to do, actually. Okay, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to start it over here. Oh, let me scale this a bit more there and just start it over here. Perfect. Okay, good. Good. This is actually, you know what? I'm going to go even smaller because I really want to show you guys this, which is really, really cool. All right. And this can be done in both ways. So I've got my procedure volume blocking, which is right here. Um, what you can do is I think you can change. Uh, there we go. We can change it to display shaded just so that it helps so that I can actually see what I'm doing right here. And then I'm going to turn that off after. Right now, obviously, it's a box shape. You can switch it to different 
objects if you want, but I'm going to stick with a box. And then I'm going to go here and I'm going to go to, uh, I believe it's brush editing. Perfect. Good. And when I go to brush editing now, now I can actually edit this volume. So I'm actually going to click on, why is it not letting me click? It should allow me to click on the face. Uh, there we go. Okay, so I had to turn off uh, display shaded volume and then allow me to actually click on the face. So I'm going to go kind of to like a top view here. Um, I can actually go here to top view and let me go grab the actual procedural uh, blocking volume. Hit F. There we go. The only challenge is, is that I need to grab that face, which I need to grab it again. There we go. And now I can go back to top view. Perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on extrude. Here we go. And yeah, I'm going to do that. And now I can actually extrude and kind of like rotate. It's going to let me, it's not going to let me rotate, but now I can actually kind of extrude. And this is why it's sometimes very hard. I'm going to have to go back into perspective here. Grab that face again. Oh, there we go. Grab that face and then I won't let me rotate it, but I am able to move it. It's not letting me move it. Oh, there we go. I can extrude it again. And you can just keep extruding. And then you should be able... Oh, that's why I'm on... I'm sorry. I'm on edit. That's why. Okay, so if I undo that, that's my bad. If I go back here to edit, now I'm able to actually move the face. That's my bad. <laughs> and rotate it if I want to, but I think rotate may not work. I think it's more of just an edit thing. But now you can see here, I'm able to actually grab that and move it around. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a pass. I'm going to go back to extrude. Don't show that again. And then I'm going to extrude it again. And then I'm going to go back to edit. And now we can move. So you can see here what I'm doing. I'm actually creating a curved path. And you can go in and you can even fine tune at a vertice level if you want. So if I wanted to, I can actually click on these vertices and move them where I need them to be. So something like that. And then I can go back to the face. Click that there. I'm just gonna grab that vertice there, move it over here. Perfect. And then now I'm gonna go ahead, click on this face. And obviously now it's created kind of like a little weird thing here. There we go. And then I'm gonna go back to extrude. And now I can extrude that which extruded weird. <laughs> Hold on, let me try extruding it. No. And then I'm going to go back to edit. Let me move that up. There we go. So I think you get the point of this, though. I think you, you guys do. So essentially now I've created kind of like a path. There we go. So now I'm going to go under edit mode, and there's my path. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to go back to my procedural volume here, scroll down, and I'm going to hit re-simulate. And let's see what happens. Ego. Oh, look at that. That's sick. There we go. So that's going to be like, that's kind of like the neat thing. I've just created that path there. And you can do the same thing actually with the procedural foliage volume if you wanted to. So you can extrude and do some neat things. So like, for example, if I wanted to, I can go now into brush editing mode. Now I've got this one here. I can grab this face, go to extrude, and then push that out. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to click on these like so. So I've got both of those selected. And then let me go here to my top view. Oops. Top view. Perfect. Center that. And then now I can like kind of round that off a bit. Just a tiny, tiny bit. Just do something like that. There we go. And then you can do the same thing here. There we go. Boom. And then we're going to go back to perspective view. Get out of editing mode. And then we are going to go ahead and re-simulate. Now we've just changed the shape of that object. 
So this is where like I feel that you're it's great. This is great for areas that you really need to essentially do some customizations, but as well kind of fill it very quickly. And so you don't have to do it manually. So you can see here, I created a nice path um, and you know I could have extended that a bit out there as well, just so that the path goes a little further, which I can do. Just go into edit mode here, go into my brush editing, grab those faces, which is one right here, grab this one here, and then just kind of like extend it out a bit just so that it goes that way. Boom. There we go. Get out of brush editing mode. Here we go. And re-simulate. Create, like you can do this obviously in bigger environments. I'm just doing it on this kind of um, size right now. And as well as you can go in and add variations to the trees, you can scale them up and down. You can start with different ones but this really helps really speeds it up but i feel that i i think there could be even more control if unreal uh enabled splines for this so you're able to actually like have spline volumes so you can control the shapes right now it's very very hard as you can see to control those shapes and you know see how it is but guys that is it for procedural volumes and editing the procedural volumes in unreal engine 5 Tell me what you guys think. Um, hope this helps, especially with uh, people who want to build large environments because this really will kind of like help, um, you know, uh, do a lot of different creative things as well. Um, you know, as well adding maybe, hey, you've got a sharp edge here. It'd be cool. Hey, maybe we can like edge that noise a bit. Maybe make it a little edgier. Um, there's like a little shadow bug going on, I think, for... Unreal Engine's flickering a lot. If you know how to get rid of that, let me know in the comments. If you guys want more videos of this, please let me know. Everybody, thank you very much and have a good night.